Powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN. It is season four, Ray, and this is episode seven of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast, presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey. It is the final release of their Chronicle series, which means we will be gifted the 45 year old Canadian Club uh, some point in the very near future. It's almost here. And in fact, it's almost available everywhere. We'll be shortly. Awesome. Um, I know that we're looking forward to tasting it. I think that kind of goes without saying. And now you have so much time, more time to indulge or enjoy with, you know, you're not doing as much this year, still doing a lot, maybe not well, quite okay, as much. Okay, but I, I think the whole point of this thing that yeah. should not be misconstrued, if that's even a word, is, so yes, less games. Great word. Yeah. However, the driving responsibilities, the practices, the that I left the house at like, I don't know, one thirty yesterday. <clears throat> Reese had a right. basketball game, a soccer practice, had to pick up Riley over at his practice. I'm like, I'm, I'm driving around. If I got to be honest with you, if I don't have navigation in the car. I might still You're be in out trouble. There. Oh, I might still be out there. <laughs> so that doesn't surprise me even a little bit because I have traveled with you <laughs> oh. extensively over the years. Um, it, in all seriousness, though, and, and we'll get to headlines in, in just a moment. Uh, for, for anyone listening who doesn't have access to the Toronto Star, and, and some don't, I mean, we have it delivered here every single day, but you know, it's a, a paywall situation and, and lots of people don't subscribe. Anyway. Bruce Arthur, who's a well-known columnist, opinionist, uh, wrote a fantastic article uh, featuring you and your decision to step away from TSN and the reasoning behind it. And I, you know, we touched on this a couple of episodes ago, but I still think it's worthy of revisiting because, um, and I don't know how much of this you want to share. It's just, you're, you're kind of like me, only in a different life as an NHL player, of course, you were the focus, depending on the game, good, bad, or otherwise. The media was there in your stall. They were asking you questions about how good you were, or maybe how not so good you were. That, that was the life you lived. Um, but that's not the life that you live now, right? Um, and because of that, I'm wondering how difficult it was for you to be as open, candid, honest as you were in that piece. Because you, know, you and I are good friends. We have some deep conversations from time to time. But I was struck and deeply impressed by how open you were with Bruce and telling your story. Well, it didn't, it didn't start out like that. You know, I, I, I didn't really, you know, I mean, that was not really my intention to <laughs> say, oh, you know, I'm going to tell kind of a life story, but, right. but it's really, it's, it's how I feel. And I, I, I mean, look, I've been on the road drags for 38 years right? Since the, since I was 20 years old and there just came this time and it, and it really was a text that I got in the middle of a game in Toronto that said, you know, why the hell are you doing a, a Maple Leafs Columbus game on a Tuesday night in Toronto when you live in Vancouver? And, and I just yeah. looked at it and I was like, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. And yeah. it was a, you know, and then coming off the pandemic, which of course affected all of us in different ways, really, I think for the first time slowed my whole brain down a bit to, you know, I wasn't always traveling. I wasn't always going to the next game. And, and basically my two careers are very selfish and very self-absorbed. You have to mm. be really, you know, yeah. everything. No, you can't. We, we, I know you've done this kids. You can't say anything in the car uh, for the next 15 minutes. I'm on an interview yeah. or you would be talking to somebody or, like for me, I, you know, I'm present, but I'm not. Oh, we'd be in a doing something. Okay, I got to go. I got a radio hit. I yeah. I got to pack. I got to get. You know, it's always something, and and it's not complaining. It's just like I I I can't do it anymore. I can't yeah. do it anymore. And I I was not happy with the way I was, which was basically the whole genesis of <clears throat> all this attempted change. I just wasn't mm -hmm. happy with it anymore. I didn't like the way I treated people. I didn't like the way I acted. I didn't like, I just, I was done with it. Now, what do you do with it? Now you got a bunch of, for lack of a better term, you got a bunch of shit that you got to deal with. Mm -hmm. And some of it's not comfortable. And I just feel like I'm in a way better place and way more equipped to step away now than 
than I would have been before because now I can be okay not living in, you know, I've got to be the top of, or I need yeah. the most attention. I need them. I don't anymore. I don't, no, no. I do my job. I do it the best I can. I'm glad people like it. I'm thrilled, really grateful people like it. And I'm grateful that I had 14 years at TSN that was amazing. And, but I can't do it all. I just can't. No. I was home drags for four of Riley's 15 Christmases. Oof. Like, yeah. I just, that's not it. When I realize that, I'm like, he deserves better than that. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to be here for the rest of them. Awesome. Well, needless to say, there was an outpouring of, of support and concern, right? You know, from a purely selfish perspective, if you're a, a hockey fan, in Canada, you're a Leafs fan. Um, now you're not hearing Ray, but as others aptly and rightly corrected, well, is, you, you're not falling off the face of the earth. Like you're doing a pile of games on ESPN, and including the playoffs. And look, if I have any say in it, uh, hopefully you'll you'll dabble in the TSN world on occasion with major events, etc. So uh, you're not retiring. You're just resetting focus. Yeah, and this has been, so first was the radio, which was 17 to 20 radio gigs a week. Um, and, you know, it might seem like 20 minutes to the people listening, oh, yeah, but it's a lot. It, it, it becomes more than 20 minutes. You've got to get to a place where you can be quiet and you can talk and, on you know, and your phone works. Although for me, I don't know why that always never seemed to work. But, <laughs> you know, so 17 to 20 of those, I had the EA thing, um, which was an amazing gig. I just loved it. Um, but it's 20 hours a month. Yeah. You know, and w which might not seem like much, except I was doing three games a week too. It just, something had to give. And this yeah. is what it was. Well, an excellent piece. And if thanks, and those listed an amazing job. I, yeah, I love his writing style drags. Yeah. And so I, I just, you know, the short burst sentences and um, I don't know. I was, wow. I, I, okay. I was happy with it. I, it was tremendous and detailed and I don't, you know, okay, maybe the business section, maybe if there's a life piece on somebody, which, you know, your story is kind of a life story. Um, I cracked that thing open and there's a great picture of you and Ollie on the front page. And then I'm like, holy smokes, this is like a two page, like expose by Bruce Arthur on Ray Ferraro. So well done, my friend. Well done. Ollie, uh, Ollie hopped right up on the on the furniture there, and so all of a sudden he's in the picture. <laughs> he wasn't going to be missed. Okay, I, I'm, I'll send this to Raheem and and Rob Gray, only because I don't know. You know, my tiny little brain works on occasion. Uh -huh. I see things, and then I'm like, that reminds me of something else. So I see you sitting comfortably staring at Ollie in this picture, and I don't know where we were: Russia, Slovakia, Denmark. Doesn't matter. I have a picture of you post game sitting in a restaurant with a glass of red wine and a bowl of fries, and you are staring deeply <laughs> into that bowl of fries. <laughs> I gotta find it. Hey, by the way, where did we get into that? That what we needed post game was a bucket of fries and a glass of wine. I don't. Like, why know, were, what man. were we doing? <clears throat> I wonder if it was Paris, maybe, because that seems they to were go. good. I don't they know. were good fries there. Really yeah, they good. were. All right, we got to keep going here. Headlines yeah, uh, once again this season presented by our friends at Boston Pizza, where, by the way, you can have a lovely a glass of red if you choose and a bucket of fries, pizza, whatever you oh, want. They got everything there. They really Man. Do. You know, so preparing headlines, uh, headlines on um, what's today? Tuesday, Monday night. You know, watching the Leaf game, somewhat uneventful. Toronto's not playing very well. Flipping Sorry, over to the somewhat uneventful. Yeah, well, it got eventful, but you're yeah, well, oh, you're saying it was the first two periods. Yeah, are, oh yeah. my gosh, like yeah. stop it. Well, we'll get to that in a second because that there's two parts to this, and we, we you know, I don't want this to be a, a Leaf driven headlines, but just based on on incident or situations in that game versus the Arizona Coyotes, we, we do need to talk about it. So uh, Toronto scores what they believe is the tying goal late in the third period. It's disallowed because the Situation Room in Toronto calls for a video review of what 
was deemed to be a hand pass. So Morgan Riley, he doesn't even bat the puck down. He's he's in a battle with, uh, I guess it was Clayton Keller, eight of the Arizona, uh, Arizona Coyotes, near the blue line along the boards, hits his glove, goes down, either hits his stick or touches uh, Clayton Keller. Anyway, Mitch Marner swoops in, steals a puck, advantage to Toronto. The refs on the ice deem it to be a good goal. The situation room goes, Zzz. We're going to check this out. They check it out, which allows now the on-ice officials to have a second, a third, a fourth look at it. And they go, oh, no, you're right. So collaboratively speaking, the Situation Room and the on-ice officials say, okay, well, Keller never regains possession, which is key in this scenario. Toronto does get the advantage because Marner, again, steals the puck, turns it into a goal. Mm -hmm. Um But Toronto is outraged because the goal is turned back and ultimately Arizona uh, moves ahead to to win the hockey game. Ticky tacky or just letter of the law, and it has to be called that way, no different than any other review process that ends up in a disallowed goal or whatever. Both. Yeah. It's both. But here's a couple things to remember. The situation room takes control of all scoring plays in the last minute of a game. So that, that's got nothing to do with the officials on the ice. They're, they're watching the game, and you got to remember, an official often is looking at a play through three guys, around another, might not have the best look. Even though there's four mm-hmm. of them out there, they might not have the best look at it. Situation room, um, they got a bazillion TVs in there. They've got every mm-hmm. camera angle they can. And because they review the play, something sparked their eye. It was that, you know, the block of the pass or clear by Riley and Marner scooping it up. And they they review it and it's by letter of the law, it's no goal. So mm. you can't use the rules once in a while. You're either using them or you're not. I can see why the Leafs are sour, but it's unfortunately for them, it's the right call. Yeah. it it It's the right call. And so, I mean, a... Just a brutal night for them, mm-hmm. really. I mean, like that—that that, yeah. that just shouldn't be. But however, it was, and um, it's it's the right call. I mean, they they can't say, "Oh, you know what? It's really ticky tacky. Let's let that one go." Right. Now, here's the crazy part: in uh, if that goal would have been at the 48 minute mark, it probably stands. Yeah, because Arizona's probably not changing it because. They wouldn't have enough time to get enough angles to take enough looks at it to go ahead and make that challenge, probably. Yeah. Well, there was a play earlier, too, and, and I think it was Gossa Spare, but I'm, I'm I, off the top of my head, I can't remember where he's got the puck, you know, uh, just below the red line. And he doesn't realize that the Leafs' net is empty. <laughs> so this was before that play, right? Um, and so if he takes two strides, not a stride and a half, he's got an empty net. <laughs> to basically seal the game. And instead he turns back because he's just trying to chew the clock. So it was a bit of an odd sequence late in the game. Uh, post game. Well, you know what? Let's, let's, go, let's go all the way back to the Montreal season opener, right? Where Sheldon Keefe was steaming after that loss right. to the Montreal Canadiens. He, he, he deemed that game unacceptable. So last night he comes out, matter of factly, and, and in my opinion, rightly says, quote, The difference between us and Arizona is that we have elite players and our elite players didn't play like elite players. I mean, that's, it's an obvious comment and, and some took it and interpreted it that Sheldon Keefe is calling out his superstars. Well, I guess he is kind of, but it's, it's, it's not like he was, you know, slamming his fist on the desk and saying, Austin needs to be better. Mitch needs to be better. Morgan, all of these things. Or is the message that regardless of how it's delivered? Why? Well, I, I mean, it's pretty clear. It's, you know, it's, it's okay to, you know, to everybody likes this term call out. Um, but it, it, in today's sphere, um, if you do it with respect, I think the players get it. And they accept it. I mean, they, do you think do you think they didn't notice they played poorly last night? No, I, I, no. I'm pretty sure they got the idea. 
So, but if you're out there screaming and yelling and they're like, oh, zip it, you know, like quickly you're like, oh, I wish he would stop that. But Keith didn't do that. He didn't do that at all. So right. I, I didn't have a, I didn't have a problem with it. What I, what I do have a little bit of a, like my radar up on is we are three games into an 82 game season, right? Mm-hmm. Around the league, I can't believe how many places there are that are in an uproar. <laughs> like, like take a half a breath. It's so easy, by the way, when you're not in it to take a yeah. half a breath. Yeah. And when you're in it, like, do you think Billy Guerin and Dean Evason are going to take a half a breath? They've given up 20 goals in three games. No, kidding. not a chance. Yeah. Like, they're like, what is going on? How do we fix it? The Leafs have played two out of three stinkers. Yeah. You know, like, so I get why they're agitated, but now is not the time to lose your mind here. I mean, like, mm-hmm. just relax, just play, just focus on what you need to be as a team. Because look, the Leafs are a good team. I'll tell you, Dregs, I told you this before the season, as much as everybody's talking about the goaltending, what really concerns me in Toronto is their defense. Yeah. And now Jake Muzzin goes down and... Time is starting to get to Muzzin anyway. You know, no like he's, doubt. He's, he's older and he's got a lot of hard, hard, hard miles on him. But now this type of stuff happens and you're like, what are they going to do? Yeah. Like what, what are the, what are they possibly going to do? Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's going to be difficult. Well, they, they, I mean, upgrade is a big word when you're looking at any position on defense this early in the season. It's it's next to impossible, right? Unless you overpay to acquire whatever that piece is. And those pieces aren't just readily available because the teams still need those pieces. It's it's too early. You kind of have to work with what you've got. Well, and they, you know, I mean, there is always, unfortunately, the cap consequence yeah. of trying to acquire yeah. a player like you've. Yeah. You've got to you've got to find the way. I mean, the name that's always out there is Jacob Chikrin until his name's not out there. Yeah, but that, that's a like they what do they have forty four dollars for the Leafs? Oh, yeah, maybe four. more now because of Matt Murray and and some of the other right. Options, but it, so. but there's not a there's not a there's not an easy fix for no. them, and and hopefully Muzzin's okay. But um, that that's as big a concern as I see as any. Yeah. Start to worry about the man too, right? That's that's young, my young father. It's yeah. it's scary. I mean, that was a collision, but it wasn't, you know, over the top. And and for a split second, he looked like he was out. He popped up again, but it's just scary. Uh, by the way, on that, uh, I I I hope Andre Kosh is okay too. In, yeah, in Carolina, he left the road Jeez. trip again, and you know, like it, it's not it's not about hockey anymore. No, no. All right. Well, your message is let's just pump the brakes here a little bit in terms of, of, of yeah. the, the negative spin around certain clubs. So uh, I'm going to apply that only if you're willing to the Vancouver Canucks, although mm-hmm. there is a bit of a trend there too, right? 4-2 Vancouver, second period against the Washington Capitals before the Caps push back in the third. Um, Ovechkin finally scores. In fact, he ended up with two on the night, but a 6-4 Washington win over Vancouver and similarly to the noise in Toronto you've got that noise developing on a game by game basis in Vancouver. Nope, three straight games have had a multi-goal lead and lost all three. Um they're on the road still. They have two yeah. more to go. They're in Columbus tonight. And then I think they finish in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. If you start looking at team schedules and and try to project oh, when they could win or you know this might be a tough one there's very few nights that you look and go, oh yeah, that team's going to win that night. Right. Yeah. Like the, the league is, it's not, it's not easy. <laughs> However, <laughs> they're, they're in a spot here because they can't keep the puck out of their net. They're missing Tyler Myers and Travis Dermott, who are two of their six defensemen. And their, their power play has not been very good They're They've given up some shorthanded goals there. There's some angst for sure. And last year, mm-hmm. if you remember, um, they got out of the gate. Their penalty killing was just terrible. And they got out so slowly to the point that Travis Green was relieved of the coaching duties and they brought in Bruce, Bruce Boudreaux. So, you know, I'm not suggesting that's on the docket, but 
you know, you can't give the season away early too. I mean, no. what if you come back from the road trip 0 and 5? Like you, you know, all of a sudden you're like, you okay. You just can't we, get those points back. No, you know, and, and you, you can't. You, you can't let the ball roll too far down the road. No. So look, Vancouver is a better team than this, but tonight's yeah. going to be a tough game for them. Like oh. they're, they're in Columbus. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. that's a tough, that, that'll be a tough one. And then if Minnie doesn't get straightened out by the time Vancouver gets there, I always hated Dregs playing a good team that was playing poorly because mm-hmm. I always felt like, you know what? They're not that far away. I hope it's not against us. Well, and, and, and just following Mike Russo for, you know, from the athletic, who's excellent in covering the Minnesota yeah. wild. They've got a real strong media market there for obvious reasons. Um, goaltending has been identified <laughs> in Minnesota and it's just not on Mark Andre Fleury and Gustafson, but you know, you, you need a higher level just to kind of stabilize things, right? So you can iron out some of the wrinkles in your game. It's not it's everything, but if you don't have it, it's just it's everything. about... Yeah. Yeah. Um, I You know, you were tied up last night. I'm not sure how much of the Montreal-Pittsburgh game that you caught, but we did want to talk about the Penguins. And, you know, it's, it's a bit of deja vu with Pittsburgh in terms of the sparkle around that team, right? The pop in Crosby. Malkin looks healthy again as evidence in the two goals that he scored. Um, and, and that was going to be one of our headlines here today. So let's lump both teams into it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the Montreal Canadiens are just feasting off their youth in a in a in a positive way. You saw Caden Gooley in the matchup with Sidney Crosby head to head. He looked like he'd played 300 games in the league in in a tough matchup. Uh, and then Kirby Doc, the new acquisition, scores in overtime on the power play to give the Montreal Canadiens that uh, that three two win over the Penguins. But but start with Pittsburgh. And their start, and then maybe a thought on what you're seeing in Montreal. Well, with Malkin in particular, so I I did their playoff series last year, and I thought, and I did one of their games down the stretch. Remember, Malkin missed uh, most of the, I think, 45 games at the start of the year with uh, ACL recovery. As having that, just because you're back, you're not back. Yeah. You know, I thought he looked pretty pedestrian last year, certainly for his standard. He didn't have any pop in his stride. He was basically a power play guy. And that was one of the reasons I thought maybe they wouldn't go the mile to sign him. However, they did. They bring him and Latang, and of course Sid's there. Um, and they bring them back. Mm-hmm. And Malkin looks like a completely different guy. Now, you know, almost a, a year post-surgery, which is about what it takes. Um, you know, everybody's a little different here and there. But he looks like he's got a little more energy. He in, does. in his game, you know, and that's a dangerous thing. Now, 80 games is a long time. And one of the challenges Mike Sullivan will have this year is how much do you play those older guys? Because it's not just those three, you know, Carter, yeah. Latang, uh, Malkin. Jeff Carter's going to be 38. You know, you, you got to be careful. Dumoulin's got a lot of miles on him. You got to be mm-hmm. careful that you don't run them into the ground. I don't mean at practice, but by playing them over game, over game, over game. So Mike Sullivan's, I think he's one of the best coaches in the league. Yeah. I think he's amazing. Does an amazing job. And, um, and that, that's going to be a challenge for them, but great start for Pitt. I, I think they're a team that a lot of people look past and I don't think you should. Mm. Um, I, I just don't think you should. I think that's a very good team. As for Montreal, this is young and energetic and skilled and, um, exciting and there'll be a time this year that they look all of those things and it's not a good thing. Yeah. Right. Like there, there'll be a yeah. time when it, whenever it's going to be, but you know, Caulfield's off to a great start. How about the pass from Drouin, by the way, <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> pass and Caulfield again, you know, just, yeah, man, that guy can shoot the puck. Holy See, shit. that tells me that Drew is is close to being 100% healthy, right? Because we know he's had both wrists surgically repaired. Mm-hmm. And you make a play like that, you, yeah. you must be feeling pretty much back to normal to actually. Well, I mean, like it that. would be it would be found money for their yeah. team if if Drew is effective again because he yeah. had, you know, he had just fallen away. Yeah. Um, but you're right those you know, Caden Gooley, you know, I, I guess we're always surprised when a young guy makes a an impact, but he is a first round pick, mm-hmm. you know, and so there is high expectation. It's just when you have this many young guys, what do you mm-hmm. really expect? You're like, you know, 
it really is a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get on a particular <laughs> night, but man, they've got a lot of really interesting, really, really exciting young players there. It's going to be a while still, but that's, yeah. a, that's a heck of a start for them. Look, let's uh, stretch the week out a little bit. We were going to talk about Boston, Carolina, Vegas, 3-0 and starts, uh, flyers out of the gate, surprisingly positive. Uh, why don't we leave that till Thursday? Right. Sure. Let's just kind of let it breathe a little bit and see what happens. Because it is but, early in the year, Drakes. Yeah. And then look, I mean, you know, we, we want to accentuate the positive. And those are great stories. And we've talked about Pittsburgh and Montreal as being positive stories. So hopefully we'll do the same with Boston, Carolina. Although that Pasternak goal last night. Oh. <laughs> By the Holy way, smokes. That guy, that guy is so fun to watch. He's, he's so got an, fun. He's got. He's just got a a joy to the way he plays. Yeah, he plays hard as well. Like he, you know, he competes all over the place. <laughs> his skill level and his creativity. Oh, I, yeah, literally one of my favorite players to watch. I just I love watching him play the game. And not that it should ever always come back to the business and the contracts and all of that, but it feels like every game that Boston allows this to drag into the season is probably going to get more expensive for them because I, and I don't think he's motivated by the contract. I mean, that's the business side. He knows he's going to get well paid, but man, he looks like he's feeling good and uh, obviously he's yeah. producing. By the way, that check difference. line, they've got the three yeah. checks together. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pavel Zaka and yeah. David Krejci was off to a terrific start in Pasternak. They, they seem to seem to enjoy playing together. That's for sure. Yeah, those are your headlines. Thanks again to our pals at Boston Pizza.